Daniel, on your way to Salem Station. Good luck to you. Thank you, Amos. We'll all be mighty anxious around here till you get back with that important cargo. So will we. It's supposed to be a big secret. It's pretty hard to keep a secret around here, and you can't blame all these folks for being anxious. It's their land and lives that are at stake. <laughs> I know you're skulking out there in the dark. Why didn't you just walk in on your hind legs like a man? I didn't want anyone to follow me here from Boonesboro. Well, that's admirable. But anyone not welcome would have been dead before he got two paces past my first sentry. And now, the information that you promised me? What about my hundred dollars? Well, you get it. If what you tell me is worth it. How do I know you'll pay? I guess you'll just have to trust me. But I... No buts, Mr. Fargo. It's just that I've never done anything like this before. If it weren't that my sister was a bonded servant, I... Your personal problems bore me, Mr. Fargo. Well, I'll tell you this much. It's a shipment of arms and ammunition. How big a shipment? A full wagon load. And where and when? Look, you said if it was worth it. Well, you can see it is. Not until I know I can get my hands on it. Daniel Boone and his Indian friend are on their way to Salem Station to take delivery. Just the two of them? As far as I know. They can't be so stupid as to try to transport such a valuable prize without protection. Corbin! Looty! Mr. Amos Fargo will be our guest for a while. Mr. Decker, I gave you the information you wanted. Give me my money and just leave me alone. I just naturally don't trust you, Mr. Fargo. But when I get my hands on that cargo, you'll get your 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces? It's the established price for selling out a friend. <laughs> spokes on that wheel, mister. I could wrap them with rawhide so they'd last a while, but if I were you, I'd get new spokes put in. Well, how long would that take? Well, they've got to be made. I'd say three, four days. That's utterly out of the question. Now, Martha, I'm sure this young man knows his business. He doesn't know ours. We can't spare the time. That's up to you, ma'am. But I sure wouldn't start out over the wilderness road with a wheel like this. One good bump and... Just wrap the wheel, young man. Yes, ma'am. Andrew. Daniel. 
Dan O'Boone. Did quite a spell. You remember Mingo. Sure. But what you two doing in Salem Station? Oh, not much. We just here. Anybody been asking for us? Not around here, Daniel. Young man, we're in a hurry. Daniel, no one knows the road to Boonesboro better than you. So would you tell this lady that rapping those folks won't be good enough? Ma'am, if I were you, I'd take Andrew's word for it and get that wheel fixed proper. I didn't ask for your advice. No, ma'am, you didn't. Pardon me, Mr. Boone? Yes, miss? My name is Susan Fargo. I'm on my way to Boonesboro to join my brother. Well, that'd be Amos Fargo. He's talked about you. He has? Well, hard anything else. He's told me about trying to get money to... Oh, it's all right. I'm not an indentured servant any longer. Poor Amos. He scrimped and saved for so long to set me free, and now my master has just died, and in his will he gave me my freedom. Then Amos doesn't know you're coming? No. I want it to be a surprise. Well, I... That certainly will be a surprise to him. It's a long way to Boonesboro. Well, I'm traveling with the Wymans. According to his will, they're to see that I reach Boonesboro safely. Young man, are you just going to stand there gaping all day? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Boone, how soon will you be returning to Boonesboro? I don't know, ma'am. Why? Perhaps we could strike a bargain. I might be willing to pay you to guide us and see to it we get there safely. I'm sorry, I'm not for her. Oh, I'll make it worth your while. I'll pay you $15 for your trouble. Yes, well, I must be getting back to the tavern, ladies. Well, I couldn't do that. Not this time. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back in Boonesboro. I don't wish to haggle, Mr. Boone. I'll make it 25. I'm sorry. Andrew, if anybody's looking for me, I'll be in the tavern. You are a greedy man, Mr. Boone. All right, I'll make it 35. I still think you ought to get that wheel fixed. Savages and peasants. I can abide neither. Such impertinence. But it appeared to me that he was just thinking of our safety, Oh, Martha. you, you're always such a fool about people. Young man, can't you hurry up with that wheel? Well, Donald. Uh, great deal, Daniel. That's a lot. It's been almost Thanks. a year, hasn't it? Sure has, and don't you ever do that to me again. No, the months go by so fast that you can't tell what's going to happen. There's a table in the back room. I'll bring the ale. Uh, don't forget the food. that shipment of arms and ammunition? Apparently there aren't any secrets in these parts either. Well, don't fret about it. I'm the only one in town who knew it was coming, because I knew you was coming too. That shipment's due today. Mm. Well, Nathan, since you're so well informed, maybe you can tell us whether or not we're going to have a military escort. Well, you can call it military if you like. It's just going to be a bunch of farmers with uniforms about as makeshift as they're training. How many? Well, there was uh, eight enlisted men under command of uh, Captain Harper. Harper. Mm. After eating jerky for three days, I was almost forgotten what food tastes like. <laughs> You're a disgrace to the American Indian, Mango. Your ancestors used to live for weeks in time on nothing but jerky. Yes, well, only half my ancestors. The other half were very partial to good roast beef and cheese and ale. So you are feeling better. Mm. If I could get a night's sleep, I'd almost feel human. You better get it right now. If that shipment gets here, we're going to have to start back right away. In that case, I'm going to pray that it doesn't arrive until noon tomorrow. Captain Harper, he's here. Never before have my prayers gone unanswered so quickly. Cheer up, Mingo, and sleep in the back of the wagon. 
Yes, and a nice downy bed of muskets and rifles. <laughs> Captain Harper, this is Daniel Boone. Mr. Boone, glad you could make it. Captain? Uh, perhaps we'd better discuss our business outside. I think it'd be more private in here. He may understand English. Oh, I do, Captain. As a matter of fact, I like to think that I speak it fairly well. Captain Harper, my good friend Mingo. Well, you certainly look like an Indian. For good reason. I'm half Cherokee. Raised and educated in London, sir. Mm. Won't you join us in an ale, Captain? I'd love to. It's been a long and dusty ride. Mr. Boone, how many men do you have with you, sir? Well, may go with my entire command, Captain. You mean the two of you are going to try to get this shipment of arms through by yourselves? Well, we're sort of figuring on a little help from you. Well, I was told to deliver the wagon here, and that's all. My men are most anxious to return to the farms. As a matter of fact, so am I. Captain, is there anything in your orders that specifically forbids you to escort the wagon all the way to Boonesboro? Well, no, not specifically. But you must understand, my men are farmers, not soldiers. Captain, with the British giving rifles to the Indians, the lives of all the settlers on the frontier may well hinge on our getting this wagon through. We all have a stake in the frontier. Very well, gentlemen. You have yourselves an escort. I'll drink to that. To a safe and peaceful journey. Mount up, boys. We're ready, Mr. Boone. I'd like to ride out of here quietly while folks around here are still asleep. Right. I hope they're not rushing on my account. I won't be awake for at least another hour. Get up there! up there. Oh, no. Stubbornness and stupidity of blood brothers. Never mind your ancient Indian proverbs. The last thing in the world we need is excess baggage, and particularly that female. Now, Daniel, you did your level best to warn them to get the wheel fixed properly. I suggest we just close our eyes and go peacefully on our way. You wouldn't do a thing like that, would you, Mingo? I'm sorely tempted. At last, somebody's coming. Come on, John, get our things together. Hurry up. Why, I declare it's Mr. Boone. It's Mr. Boone. Miss Fargo? Hello. Mr. Boone? Hello, Miss Fargo. I hope you can help us. We seem to have lost a wheel. Well, it's about time you came along. That friend of yours is going to get a piece of my mind, Mr. Boone. The first little jostle and the whole wheel falls apart. Ma'am, if I recall, he tried to warn you. Getting us stranded out here in this wilderness. Two women and a poor excuse for a man. Heaven knows what could have happened to us. 
Well, don't just stand there. Help us load our things into your wagon. We seem to be causing you a great deal of trouble, Mr. Boone. Oh, it's not your fault, Come along, Fargo. Susan. Mr. Boone. Do you think this could be some kind of a trap? No, I don't think so, Captain. We saw them in town yesterday, and we know they're en route to Boonesboro, too. Well, I certainly don't like the idea of them riding along with us. It's bound to slow us down. We've got enough on our hands with that cargo. Well, I don't like it either, but we can't move this wagon until we get that wheel fixed, and we can't leave them out here, no telling when another wagon will come along. Very well, Mr. Boone. It's your decision. Joe, I figure oh, we'll unload this, and we'll get that I wheel off, and we'll be on our way. It's all because of your greed, Mr. Boone. If you'd accepted a fair price to guide us, none of this would have happened. Daniel, would you mind? And if you think you're going to get paid one penny, you're sadly mistaken. It'll take all our money just to get that wheel fixed and pay our expenses while we're delayed. And one thing more, what are those soldier boys doing following us? Well, ma'am, those soldier boys just might save your scalp before we get back to Kentucky. What exactly do you mean by that? Mr. Boone? <laughs> Mr. Boone, wait a minute. Mr. Boone, do you hear me? Mr. Boone, I am talking to you. I demand an explanation. I might mean that we're carrying arms and ammunition in this wagon that a lot of people would like to have, including the Indians. Indians? Yes, ma'am. You mean... You mean we're in danger and you're deliberately compromising our safety by taking us with you? We'll be much better off right here. Yes, ma'am. Ready, right, man. Hi, Carlos. How are you? I began to wonder what had happened to you. I had to talk to you to take a long way around, so I passed those soldiers on the road. Soldiers? What soldiers? Captain and eight men riding escort to that wagon. Well, that's nine soldiers plus Boone and the Indian. They're 11 to our nine. You know, I don't fancy those odds. No. But would you fancy our nine to their two? All we have to do is convince those soldier boys that they're needed at home. How do you do that? Argo. How long have you been living in Boonesboro? Three years. And Boone thinks of you as an honest, upright citizen? What are you getting at? Well, if you told him something, he'd believe you. Believe what? Now, listen, I'm in this too deep already. Well, you, uh, you still, still do want that hundred dollars. And you'll get it, but, uh, you're going to have to earn it. I told you I'm not going to be part of any killing. I'm not going to do anything. You'll do it. And you'll do it convincingly. Or you will be part of a killing. Mrs. Wyman, I wanted to thank you. That food was delicious. Thank you, Mingo.
That does it, Mr. Boone. Livestock's been watered. All the wheels greased. Continued good luck will be in Boonesboro this time tomorrow evening. Well, I'm going to be happy we roll through the gates of the fort with our cargo and skins in tight. Uh, Mr. Boone, about our wagon. As soon as we've delivered Miss Fargo to her brother in Boonesboro, we'll be anxious to get back to Boston. We have a good wheel ride in Boonesboro. He'll have your wheel rolling soon. You mean he'd travel way out where we left the wagon just to fix a wheel? That's right. My. In the city, a, a man can't depend on anyone but himself. Well, I suppose you're right, but it'd be a sad day out here when neighbors won't help each other in time of trouble. Things are so much, so much more simple here. I, I, a man knows his place more clearly. Captain. Daniel, I'm mighty glad I ran into you. Everybody's got to load up and move out right now. Now, hold on a minute, Amos. Mr. Boone, who is this man? Amos Fargo, friend from Boonesburg. What is it? Everything. There's no time for making overnight stops with the cargo you're carrying. The British are moving out of Fort 96 and marching into the valley. Well, Captain, that's where my farm is. I, I got to get to my family. My home's in that valley, too, Captain. Right, everyone's in the That means Boonesburg is in danger, too. With the Indian tribes to the West House in the pay of the British. Well, how'd you learn about this, Amos? A courier rode through Boonesboro. He wanted every able-bodied man we could spare to make a stand against the Redcoats, but nobody's moving until you give the say-so. Mr. Boone, I know I promised you an escort. This changes things considerably. I recognize the importance of this cargo to secure our flank on the frontier, but... I understand, Captain. Everybody has a desire to protect their own. Good luck to you, Mr. Boone. Captain. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Break camp. We're heading for home. Get these men mounted. You three men are dismissed. All right, men. Let's go. Man up. Dig out, Come on. Come on. Daniel, has it occurred to you that that courier may be a British trick to draw the soldiers off? To make it easier for someone to capture our cargo, it has. The British or anyone else with an eye for our precious arms and ammunition. A trick or not, we have any right to keep those soldiers, even if we could. Oh, it didn't appear to me that he was lying. I suppose he could have been, though. Well, either way, Amos, you had no way of knowing you did the right thing. Well, in any case, we'd best make the most of what we have and prepare for the worst. Well, I think the three of us can make a pretty good showing with all the rifles we have if we have to. The three of us? I figured I'd go on back to the fort with word from you, Daniel. Well, I reckon they will be anxious, all right, but they're just going to have to wait. Think you can drive this wagon, Amos? Well, yeah, I guess so. If there is anyone out there waiting to attack us, they'll have an easier time of it at night. Yes. And with the soldiers gone, we'd be like sitting ducks here. There's a fair-sized cave up here in the hills not too far away if we can make it before dark. Well, the wagon's all hitched. Mr. Boone! Bye to you, sir. Bye, Captain Harper. Oh, uh, Captain, how long will it take you to get back to your home? Oh, four or five hours force ride if these horses hold out. Well, it struck us that this just might be a trick. Make the wagon that much easier to capture. I guess that could be possible. I don't see how I can take the chance that it isn't. If I were the only one concerned. Well, of course not. But if you do find that there's a... I'll lead a fresh company of soldiers back here personally. We'd appreciate that. Goodbye again, Mr. Boone. Five hours there, five hours back. I doubt there'd be any of us left to appreciate anything. I'd feel a lot better if we three were the only ones. Oh, by golly, Amos, I almost forgot. We got a surprise for you. Sur surprise? Hmm. Susan? to surprise you, but you look as though you'd seen a ghost. <laughs> but what are you doing here? I'm free, Amos. 
But you were going back to England with Mr. Wingate unless we could save $300 to buy you freedom. Yes, yes, that's the way it was. I already saved $200, but I I, could... I I know, I know. But Mr. Wingate died, and in his will, he gave me my freedom. Then I I don't need the other $100. No, no. I'm free. I'm free, Amos. I'm free. Your plan worked just like a charm. Didn't take those soldier boys two minutes to skedaddle out of there. <laughs> Could be a decoy move. No, no, no. I trailed him for three, four miles. They ain't going nowhere but home. I don't know. It still bothers me. Oh, Boone doesn't fool that easily. Oh. What about Boone, Ludy? That man ain't stupid. As soon as the soldiers left, he started breaking camp. Perfect. Pick him off on the trail in the dark is going to make it real simple. Uh Uh-uh. He headed right for that cave up on the porcupine. Oh. No doubt figuring to ford up there until morning. Well, that makes it easier. We'll have him caught up there just like a possum up a tree. Now, it stands to reason they haven't got enough food or water to hold out very long. But long enough for that captain to find out that he's on a wild goose chase and then come back here to find out why. Why don't we take him now? That may require a bit of taking. Since he's decided to hole up in there, he must be smelling something in the wind. And then with all of those guns, gentlemen, Boone and the Indian could put up quite a battle. Then there's that other man and the two women with him. Two women and a man? You didn't mention that, Corbin. Well, they, uh, they weren't traveling with him when they left the Salem station. Changes the odds again, huh? It does that, but uh, perhaps to our advantage, those two women could get in his way. <laughs> yeah, right. and Fargo's in there with him. Maybe he can get the drop on Boone when we attack. Yeah. <laughs> One of the cardinal rules for men in our trade, gentlemen, is never put your trust in an informer. Yeah. However, Fargo or no, I'd say that uh, we have Mr. Boone precisely where we want him. <laughs> All right, get your horses, gentlemen. We're going to pay a call on Mr. Boone. <laughs> Powder in the cave. We'll use the heavy stuff to build a barricade. Orders us around like cattle. Insist we stay in this cave and doesn't tell us why. We have a right to know. Ask him. Oh, well, now, Martha, Mr. Boone... Ask no... him. Mr. Boone, my wife and I would like to know why those soldiers left so suddenly, and, and, and what did we come here for? As I told you, it's just a precaution. Oh, uh, yes, but against what? I don't know. Maybe nothing. But if there's trouble, you'll know about it soon enough. Susan, we've got to get away from here without them knowing. What? You're in great danger here. I? What about the others? There's nothing we can do to help the others. Our only chance is to get out of here before it starts. Before what starts? Shh. Amos, what are you talking about? Susan, just trust me now. Please, come on. Amos, what is it? Tell me. Why don't you tell us all, Amos? You've been acting strange ever since you got here. I think you'd better tell us why. I sold out, Daniel. There was no courier. I was told to say that to draw the soldiers out. Oh, Amos. By whom, Amos? Who bought you? Simon Decker. Decker? Don't you know who Decker is? He's trying to seize these rifles and this ammunition to give to the Shawnees to use against all the settlers in Kentucky. No, I thought he only wanted them to sell for profit. How could you? Don't you see? I thought that you were leaving for England, that you'd be a bonded servant for the rest of your life unless I did something fast. There just wasn't 
any other way to raise that hundred dollars in that amount of time. It doesn't give you the right to risk other people's lives. What's done is done. Now, how many men are with him? I'm not sure. I saw about eight. Does he know where we are? I don't know. It won't take him long to find us. We better make the most of our time. Let's get some fires started. Daniel, I'm a pretty good hand with a rifle. I wouldn't know who you'd be aiming at, Amos. for that matter. Those fires will keep him at bay for a while. He won't risk his skin unless he has to. Hmm. He knows they won't last all night. And if we move out to feed those fires, pick us off with pleasure. Traitor. Because of your greed and stupidity, we all may die. Now, Martha, there's no good in it. Yes, there is. And if there's any chance at all of stopping those cutthroats, he's the one to do it. You leave him alone. Leave him alone? Maybe I should thank him. She's right, Susan. I'm responsible. If there are only some way to stop them. There is. There is. No, Martha. You just keep out of this. No! Susan! Susan! No! Now listen. There's no other way. And there's no one else to do it. Let him go. Susan! Susan! He's gonna try to kill Decker! That started, and this is why I'm gonna start it. She's as good as killed Amos. <gasps> Mr. Fargo. Now, where do you think you're going? I gotta see Decker. All right, go. Blood money, hmm? I want to talk to you in private. Gentlemen, Mr. Fargo wants to talk in private. <laughs> Come on, Woody. Well, uh, you've earned your hundred dollars. Boone knows you're coming after the wagon. He's ready and waiting. How does he know that? I told him. And then you came back here. We picked up some people on the trail. There's a man and two women. One of those women is my sister. Oh, I see. Well, that is too bad. Why didn't you bring her out with you? She didn't want to come. Well, that was foolish of her, wasn't it? I don't want anything to happen to her, Decker. 
of all the things in this world what you want, Mr. Fargo. Boom. If the lives of those women in there mean anything to you, you'll come out now. The only thing that interests me is this, is this wagon load of arms, nothing else. All right. If you give yourselves up peaceably now, you'll all be free to go. Well, that's my proposition. Well, any questions? Just one. How do you figure on getting back? Oh, this is a, this is a flag of truce. Well, now I admit it looks like one, and if anybody but you were carrying it, I'd believe it. Why, oh, Daniel, you rascal! Now you just keep coming in a straight line between me and your boys out there. Or I'll have to pull this trigger. Slowly.
men are still out there. When those fires burn down, they're coming and get you. All of you. Well, there'll just be one less rifle fire. Now it's time up, Mingo. Now you've done it. Now none of us will live. That's right, ma'am. My boys aren't going to like this at all. <gasps> Where's my brother? Where's Amos? He's dead. <gasps> Oh, well, you're going to have to die, too. All right, Tucker. You fool. You stupid, stupid fool! Mr. Wyman, I'd appreciate it if you'd keep your wife under control. Easy. 
Jason. You see, he could have fired the gun. He was telling the truth. He could have fired once, my... <laughs> Corbin! <laughs> Bring the men in! We're gonna have ourselves a turkey shoot! <laughs> with you in this terribly dangerous territory. Martha. We could all be Martha, killed. Martha, be quiet. Just for once, be quiet. Now get inside and get your things together. Yes, John. Yes, John. It's warm. Well, it seems tonight the lamb has turned into a lion. <laughs> Mr. Boone? Give up on me, miss. You will. You won't be able to save me for the hangman. I'll just. I'll die here. She seems very upset. I guess she never shot anybody before. That girl, she's. She's Fargo's sister. It's very poetic. Boom. You, you give this to the girl. I, I owed it to her brother. 